would like to share with you this uh, presentation on uh, impact assessment made by the European Commission before proposing this uh, EU regulation on uh, succession. As you know, the impact analysis is kind of uh, cost benefits analysis, so typical uh, approach used by economics to understand the consequences of uh, regulations and uh, the impact on citizens and uh, society. So uh, it's well known that uh, uh, impact assessment is uh, an integral part of the legislation pro process, uh, especially at uh, EU level. Uh, this because they aim to understand uh, the the consequences of uh, normative actions uh, and they use uh, a comparison of options and uh, with the aim of finding the best solution. So an important part to understand the relevance of uh, cross-border succession is the demographic analysis. Because basically when you have a cross-border succession, when you have uh, non-national uh, residents, and uh, when you have uh, international couples, when you have, uh, for instance, when you buy a property ab uh, abroad. So uh, consider that this impact assessment was commissioned by the European Union in uh, about 2006, so it took a long time. So these data were from that time, and they uh, focused uh, only on some countries because they had lack, lack of data. Uh, now, it's much later, we can compare these figures and uh, in a certain way to check if they were right in, uh, in their, uh, uh, let's say, in, in their uh, forthcoming uh, uh, expectation. They concentrated in uh, uh, about uh, in, uh, in data analysis of five countries: uh, Spain, Italy, Czech Republic, uh, and Portugal. So we can compare this data from 2006 uh, uh, with data that we have uh, for um, Eurostat in 2018. And we can see that uh, they were quite right because uh, except for Spain where figures remains uh, about uh, constant, we, we can see that uh, the, the, the proportion of foreign population on the total resident population was increasing in Italy, almost doubling in Portugal and also in uh, Czech Republic. Also, as concerns uh, international uh, marriage, international couples, uh, at that time they had an increasing of the proportion of uh, international couples on the total. Uh, let's say that nowadays uh, the, the, the size of this is more than uh, 16 millions of international couples. So, once we define that this uh, succession, cross-border succession uh, is relevant, we have to um, understand what are uh, factors uh, uh, creating potential problems. So there are many kind of factors. Let's say first part is uh, institutional factors. Second part is uh, mm, citizens' action, means social trends. Inside the institutional uh, factors, we can uh, um, differentiate something that uh, uh, doesn't depend on uh, EU competence, it depends on uh, the national legislation. So, for instance, different substantive law or uh, different bodies handling uh, the succession. There are also factors that uh, European Union can change. Uh, you know very well about jurisdiction rules, conflict of law rules, choice of law by the state or recognition of wills, uh, status of heirs. So 
in this area, a European Union can uh, make an intervention. And of course, as I told you before, there are uh, social trends like uh, demographic trends or uh, let's say uh, people uh, buying property abo uh, abroad, uh, international marriage, and so on. What are the, the problem, let's say, in, uh, in the absence of the regulation, what are the, the problems, the potential problem? Let's say uh, there is a problem in uh, uh, planning for the, the curious for the testator. The, the problem is to plan the inheritance and uh, the outcome of the succession doesn't meet maybe the expectations of heirs or uh, maybe creditors and all the, let's say, uh, agents involved in the uh, succession. This caused delay in time to solve uh, complicated cross-border cases uh, and uh, costs. Costs that uh, were mainly uh, quantified in the uh, legal services needed to uh, solve the situation. Okay, now let's see what are the typical scheme of the impact assessment. First of all, you have the objectives that basically can, can be uh, represented by the solution to the problem we, s we saw in the previous slide. Then you have to find options to solve these objectives and you have to measure the effects of the option uh, with a score. Uh, the score is based uh, on numerical uh, scale, like limited effect uh, to, uh, let's say, um, great effect uh, from zero to one, two, three. So you, you assign a number to each uh, option, to the effect of uh, each option. And um, let's say that the, the value you assign uh, is based on uh, the impact on uh, fundamental rights, uh, social uh, effects, financial effects, as well as uh, economic effects. We can be more specific about uh, the objectives. You can define, for instance, general objectives, specific ob objectives, and uh, operational ob objectives. Mm. In a general way, there are uh, a problem for citizens to efficiently plan and organize their succession in advance, and also um, uh, rights of potential heirs, creditors, uh, should be uh, uh, made in a way that are respected in an efficient way. Uh, specific objectives uh, are to prevent parallel proceedings and the application of uh, different uh, substantive law and all other things that you know that are typical, um, uh, let's say, uh, a future of the succession regulation like limited uh, choice of law, recognition of rights, uh, and uh, easily access to information of wills abroad. You can be even more uh, specific trying to define the operational objectives. Let's say how you solve these specific objectives. This in a certain way can be our options. Mm -hmm. So harmonization of rules on uh, jurisdiction, harmonization of, of rules um, on conflict uh, of law, uh, harmonization of rules uh, as concerns the choice of law, uh, recognition of uh, decisions uh, and uh, power of administrators, uh, executors, uh, status of heirs or European su succession certificate, and uh, as uh, easily access to wills abroad, of course you have to find a system, a new system in order to, to have uh, easy access to this information. So these first three uh, general objectives are concerning harmonization of law. They used uh, a single matrix to solve this. For the access, 
uh, access to information about wheels. They use another matrix because the, 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 the problem was of, uh, of a different nature. Let's see um, how they define the, the, the options. I just put uh, on, the, on these slides, uh, rand it can be, it, it can look like to you that it's random, but there is a sense that I show you uh, how, why I organize these, uh, these slides like this. So options could be, uh, first option is always status quo, so doing no nothing. Uh, then uh, harmonization of jurisdiction rule and the recognition of judgments and decisions. Uh, third option, harmonization of conflict law rules. Uh, this option adds to the, the previous one, a uh, European uh, succession certificate. Uh, then you have uh, some combination of two options that of course give you a better score, a better result. Then you have a database uh, of, uh, let's say, uh, national rules that can be uh, consulted by citizen or legal operators or uh, inf uh, national information campaigns. So this doesn't need intervention uh, by European Union. This is some intervention. You have to harmonize rules. So the combination of this option is just what we have in the succession regulation now. As concerns the easy accessibility to the wheels uh, 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 for citizens abroad uh, in another country, they used the same reasoning using this uh, option, status quo, uh, recommendation on interconnection of registers and info campaign, then uh, interconnected uh, national registers, or uh, the creation of a new EU European uh, central register. In this case, uh, we will see after, even if the, the option before was better, because you have uh, one reference uh, where you can find wheels of another country, uh, it was preferred, uh, the option P2, because it was uh, less costly and uh, uh, more feasible, let's say. So the combination of this uh, two option A7 and B2 give you what you have in the uh, EU succession regulation now. So just to show you quickly how they use matrix to do this, they put the options we saw in the, in the previous slides in the columns and then the objectives in each row. And for each, let's say, uh, objective, they assign a score like option. Yes, I finished. <laughs> <laughs> it was just last slide. Uh, okay, now just to, to show you, because this was the, the let's say, uh, the typical matrix used for the impact assessment. Uh, and uh, this scheme was used as well for the uh, uh, EU succession regulation on matrimonial property regimes and uh, registered partnerships. So it's a typical scheme that, that it's interesting to know that uh, they use it uh, and uh, um, how it works. Uh, it's very simple. Just uh, I made some uh, simplification on the scores. So they assign score quickly to each uh, uh, options. When you, uh, let's say, end the this process, you can sum for each column, means for each option, for each policy option, the score to see which is the more convenient option to adopt. And in the case, as we said before, of uh, succession regulation, it's a combination of uh, harmonization on jurisdiction, uh, law rules, and the recognition of judgments concerning the succession harmonization of conflict law, uh, law rules and uh, European succession certificate. So this combination was just the option A7. They also calculate what is the, the saving in terms of uh, economic cost, financial cost, because they estimated that the wasting of resources to deal with uh, uh, 
cross-border succession was about 4 billion of euro, so you can save about 30%. Last slide, uh, if you look at the end of uh, the impact assessment made by the European Commission, they propose monitoring indicators and uh, the MAPE project that was, uh, let's say, underscored by Stefan and presented by Professor Votley was going in this direction. Of course, uh, limited to the notarial field, but it's exactly what the uh, European Commission was expecting from all professionals. Thank you very much uh, for your kind attention. Thank you.